So the main thing is to bring your mind home. Now, how to bring your mind home? This is the key. Interesting. But bring your mind home because it's been so far away. It's gone so far away, isn't it? You don't have to send a huge long lasso and just grab to get all your like you know, like a cowboy. Also Tibetans also you know warriors. Let's get my mind back, you know. You don't have to do that. In fact, just so simply here now, if you just you see, in fact, just recognizing, just merely recognizing, ah. Samsara's mind turned out to be lost in projection. That's really the problem. Just I've just been lost in appearance of mind, really. And I have no understanding of real essential. Just even recognizing that is a good start. You understand? Good start. You see the really the problem. In fact, the solution is in the problem. Isn't it? By the way, solution is in the problem. The problem and solution the same thing. If you understand one way, it's solution. If you don't understand, it's a problem. So very much you see that you recognize that. And then you see the real, you see, the real secret, the real secret, if I tell you, whether you can just bring your mind home, whether you can just settle, whether you can really learn how to just simply be, that's the thing. If you can just be, just be, and you're able to be, not bad. Do you understand? Because the main problem is, you see, we lost the sense of being. We're everywhere, but nobody's at home. We've lost the sense of being. We lost the sense of being. In fact, the French philosopher Pascal, he said, all of men's difficulty, which also means women's difficulty also, all of men's difficulties lies in his inability to sit quietly in a room by himself. Because we cannot just, just stay quietly. That simplicity we've lost, that pleasure of that simplicity, that joy of that simplicity we've lost, or forget about lost. We've never tasted. We never tasted that. We're only therefore mind turned outly, lost always projections, always seeking entertainment, happiness out of ourselves. Always. So therefore the life becomes more complex. On one hand we become more and more, how do you say, mind is very developed. When you look at the kids these days, they're so sharp, so intelligent, isn't it? Incredible intelligent, you know, uh, you know. But then, as you know, Dalama often worries about education. Said, "There's so much the developed mind, but what about the development of heart?" But we may talk about a heart. By the way, heart is, of course, being human value. All these things on a, on a general level, we can speak up that. But actually, on a deeper level, heart is really understanding your essential nature of your mind. Is really the heart really come to discover your really your being you understand experiencing which when you discover on the deeper level it's called Buddha nature also because there's a nature in us in a fundamental nature is there Buddha nature there because we all beings regardless we have we all have Buddha nature the potential enlightenment that is the fundamental message of the teaching of Buddhas very much and in fact, it is incredibly, I remember a student of mine, she was telling me, I think is one thing, is that the fundamental thing that we need in this Western world, modern world, is because we are so messed up, you know, because of a childhood, this and that, all the things, you know, that most important, she was saying, the teachings provide us to introduce to us our, our fundamental goodness, our Buddha nature. And that is so empowering so inspiring to discover that is our nature and not these stories of you see of our suffering all these that's not really us that's what teaching shows you understand so that really when you begin to discover the really the nature mind you know 
when you really discover the fundamental goodness and in the Buddha nature, then you realize, you see, when you take a plane and go beyond the cloud, sometimes when you see there's so much cloud, and we think the sky is the cloud, you know. That's like normally our ordinary mind is in emotions are. But when you take a plane and go beyond the clouds, you find, you see, there's an infinite sky that's never ever been touched by the clouds. You understand? That's your real nature. There's an aspect of your mind that's really always pure. Because the nature of mind is like a crystal. Pure, pristine. Because we always think of mind as thought emotion. Thought emotion is just the appearance of mind. The mind itself is pure, pristine awareness. Pristine awareness. You understand? Like a crystal. And crystal, whatever you put under, if you put a green cloth, what happens? The crystal becomes green. If you put a red cloth, it becomes red. Even the crystal becomes red, crystal becomes green when you put that. Is crystal green? Is crystal red like that? A mind the same way. Whatever occupies, anger comes, it becomes anger. Desire comes, it becomes desire. Good thought comes, it becomes good, bad thought. But our mind itself is beyond both good and bad. It's pure. But like the example, I give a movie projector. In the movie projector, there's a bulb. The bulb is giving the light. And without this, there's no cinema. No cinema. The light is being used by the cinema, but light itself is not involved in cinema. It's used by. Aspect of our pure mind is used by. Because quality mind is no, but this knowing mind has been misused by the ego to grasp. So the whole point of the practice is to free the mind from its grasping, return to its pure knowing, to the natural simplicity. Is that clear?